Let's talk a little bit about some different thing that's even subtler. Uh, how many of you, raise your hands, if you see a young woman? Put your hand down. Raise your hand if you see an old woman. Okay, we have about half. Now this relates to something that's known as the pessimism and the optimism bias. As you can see, this picture is ambiguous. On the bottom left, a version of that picture looks more like a young woman. On the bottom right, a version of that picture looks more like an older woman. People who are optimistic would tend to see a younger woman, just because in our culture, youth is associated with positivity. People who are pessimistic tend to see the older woman. <laughs> there you go, you're laughing because you know it's true. <laughs> Uh, this, this was a, actually a big problem for my wife and I, so it mentioned that her influence on me. When we co-founded a nonprofit together in 2014 to popularize the research on decision making, this was a big problem because we had a lot of conflicts, we had a lot of tensions, we had a lot of fights. She tends to, you know, I tend to think that the grass is greener on the other side of the hill, that everything will be wonderful, I'm very optimistic. She tends to think that the grass is yellow on the other side of the hill. <laughs> very pessimistic. So I had a lot of conflicts until we figured out a really good way of working together, which I then brought to my clients. And so this was a different example. There was a school district in Rhode Island. This was in 2013. When the school district won a grant from Obama's race to the top for 75 million, or not the school district, I'm sorry, the whole of Rhode Island won a grant for 75 million as part of the race to the top. And they were trying to figure out, the local school district, how to address the grant, how to get more money, and so on. And they were having a lot of fights between people there, between optimists and pessimists. So their optimists were generating ideas. They were saying, hey, this is what we should do. These are great ideas. Pessimists kept shooting them down, saying, no, 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 that's bad. <laughs> that's dangerous. Don't do that. And so that was a really bad conflict, a lot of tension. So I was brought in. And what we found was that optimists were perceiving Pessimists just as naysayers who wanted to tear them down. Whereas pessimists were perceiving optimists as just going off half-cocked and not having good ideas. So that's the perceptions, right? Now once we figured out how to collaborate well together, the best way of collaborating for pessimists and optimists is for opt to separate the process of decision-making and idea creation. So creation of ideas belongs to optimists because pessimists are bad at it. They just see all the flaws of their ideas. They're not good at brainstorming tends to be the case. So the optimists create the ideas they, and realize that they're half-baked potatoes and give them all to the pessimists. And then the pessimists finish backing the potatoes <laughs> and take the few ideas that are really great and make them wonderful. So that's cool district that really worked out well for them. They got their numbers up from 2013 and graduation rates to 2015 from 73% to 79%, which was more than uh, twice as much as other Rhode Island school districts at this time because they learned how to collaborate well together. 